Excuse me. I would like to make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Because this is the people videos. For your iPhone 15. Ultra. <laughs> Classic orangish yellow tape in there. Don't ask me why. Oof. Okay. Maybe we can just slide this out at this point. Man, they really pack it in there. The drama in the velvet bag over here. Okay. Some strange paperwork. Excuse me, what? Ooh, I feel some clicky buttons in there. There you have it. We have a big sticker on the back, and you know what that sticker is doing. I'm surprised I was able to get that off cleanly, but look what it reveals. Yeah, that's right. That right there, that is an Apple logo. It's kind of tough to see, but that is there. And what's interesting, we have an extremely matte finish on the back, like more so than the previous model. It's matte and almost grippy texture, pretty much identical to the previous model as I hold them up there. So you do have a rumor of a periscope lens, but there's nothing I can tell from this model that indicates that. Those two camera layouts look pretty much identical. I think we're gonna have an identical height measurement, an identical width measurement. Yeah, that pretty much looks to be the case. The other thing I'm noticing about this model, the edge is not your regular polished, it's more of a brushed look, almost like brushed aluminum or some other type of brushed metal. I know there were rumors of similar to the uh, Ultra watch that you would have uh, so maybe some other metal in use and and maybe a brush to look like this so that seems to be indicated here by this mock-up on this side of the device our a power switch remain in the same location and nearly identical maybe slightly smaller that's a bit odd on the bottom of the device ooh, that definitely is usb type c ladies and gentlemen i should i should be showing you and not me so the bottom one is obviously the 15 and this is the 14 and if you look closely there you can see that the 15 model has a little pin in the center which if you've ever looked at a USB-C cable before you know that you have that hollowed out center portion that the cable fits around as opposed to the lightning connector like we currently have on the iPhone 14, all the 14s and dating back forever, it fits inside, but it has no central cavity. So that is what your lightning port looks like. And then you can see that pin inside and the slightly different shape. I suppose what we should do is actually get a type C cable and see if it fits in there. I think I have one right over there. You know, I don't know if this is gonna work or not because sometimes with these mockups, it's not exactly to spec, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. Oh, it's a perfect Type-C fit. Ooh, so how about that for news? As far as those manufacturing these things early in China, they are con- And I have reason to believe that they know what they're talking about because they are already in production around things like cases. And if you were gonna make a case for this phone, as we'll be doing obviously with later case as well, you're gonna need to know exactly how much space you need for your cutout for your case. And so if it is, if it does happen to be USB Type-C, you're gonna need to know now before you go into mass production. And this is a perfect USB-C fit on the bottom of the iPhone 15. Obviously, if I pull over the iPhone 14, you'll see not the same dimension at all. You're getting no action there on the Type-C. So that's lightning. So that's kind of big news in and of itself. And it's a thing that people have uh, wanted for a while. No more proprietary connector. Was it the legislation in the EU? Was it some other reason? Were they going to do it anyways? There was rumors of a portless iPhone. And this unlocks some things for you. It unlocks the ability to get your faster charging rates, what type of charger they put out, and just how fast this thing can actually recharge. On this side of the device, there were rumors here, an actual kind of capacitive button, a solid state button instead of physical buttons. Like it might be something similar to the trackpad on the new MacBook. But then that rumor quickly fell out of favor and people seem to agree, including the manufacturer of this, that on the iPhone 15, we're going to have a dedicated volume buttons similar to the previous version. However, in this case, they've made it one uniform rocker as opposed to individual buttons. I don't know if we're gonna see that on the final version of iPhone. That's an interesting choice that it's inside of, uh, of this demo. Take, take that with a grain of salt right there. I don't know. 
I don't really care one way or the other. Like, maybe from a design perspective, you have a strong feeling about that. But the rocker functions almost identically to the individual buttons. There's separate clicks on each end of the rocker. I guess there's arguments in either direction. Sim tray is in the same location. And here is your other change, right up near the top. So the legendary from previous generation iPhones is gone. It is now a button, and it may very well function as an action button, similar to what we saw on the Ultra Watch. So it might not just do uh, silent, vibrate, and so forth. You may be able to do a lot of different things with it, but you will no longer have the satisfaction of this click that you've had, not just on the iPhone 14, but a variety of previous models. Now it will be a button going forward. Let me know how you feel about that down in the comments. I'm curious what the consensus is on that. And boy, have they done a good job this year on the front of the device. Like, holy cow, that bezel is extremely slim. Dynamic Island still in its exact same location. This is one of the best looking models I've ever handled or looked at. This is incredible. The weight of it, it feels substantial almost identical to the current generation iPhone. And then let's go ahead here and get a quick compare of those bezels versus the previous generation. So you can see, I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot, but I promise you it's a lot. It's almost half what the previous gen was. It looks that way almost, almost half to my eyes, depending on the angle you look at it. And if we go down to like the chin, for example. Yeah, if you kind of compare in the corners there, they definitely shrunk it down. And that impact is pretty massive when you look at the device. Like, I'm looking at that, and that almost feels like all screen. And I love the symmetry of it. I mean, I'm still not the hugest fan in the world of the dynamic island. It kind of sticks out a little bit. It is interesting and unique the way they've gone about maintaining those necessary components for their version of Face Unlock, which is one of the most secure that's out there. So I can appreciate that. But can you imagine this thing if you didn't have this piece at all? If it was just equivalent the whole way around and you had like an under display front facing camera. Now those are not really the best yet. So that's not a perfect solution. The quality suffers and a lot of people on their iPhones love to use their front facing camera. So I'm not sure people would go for it. But just imagine what that would, how minimal that thing would look if you didn't have any dynamic island. But instead just equivalent bezel, tiny trim bezel the entire way around. It's like full brightness all the time, just across the entirety of the device, not including buttons. So that's coming 70 on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And we'll pull over the iPhone 14 Max. Do the same thing. 10 points versus 767. So it's like we're talking about a millimeter of difference across the entirety. So that's why it's so difficult to measure on each side individually. But definitely you end up with a more narrow feeling device. And that's good because when you look at the aspect ratio that Apple's using, sometimes these things can feel a little bit fat in your hand. And then reaching the far side of the screen can be a difficult task. So any bit that you can shave off of the bezels and the width of the device while maintaining your screen real estate is going to be, that's going to be a welcome addition and improvement to any especially max size device. Actually, I just noticed it has a little a curvature around the edge where it actually wraps around the exterior of the front and back panel. And that could be another reason why it feels even thinner. It really dials up right at the edge and goes almost wraps around the glass on the front and the back. And the previous model maybe did slightly less of that with the a polished version. But this whole frame, the stainless steel frame compared to whatever this material here is going to be, it feels fatter by comparison. And obviously on the measurements, it is fatter. The other benefit with this port, this is the same port that's used not just for Type-C, but also for Thunderbolt. So for those that use these things for like pro video and huge file transfers, there's a rumor that on the pro model device this port may support thunderbolt 3. Point, which would be crazy i mean getting thunderbolt 3 transfer speeds off of your phone this would be incredibly useful for those that shoot a lot of content and large file sizes oh you know what there's another important measurement there's a rumor that the device would be thicker and i'm talking like this thickness here possibly for battery improvements this is the iphone 14 pro max 7.9 new guy yeah it's fatter it's definitely a bit fatter. 
just under 8.4, right around 8.3 is the measurement I'm getting. I don't know if Mo can see that there. So fatter, oh, you know what happens with a fatter phone is your camera units don't bump out as far. So they're popping out a little bit less. Maybe people didn't like that all that much. I mean, here's the benefit, slightly fatter device, maybe slightly better battery, less of a protrusion on the camera modules. Look at that, it's definitely slimmer than it was. They're still poking out, but not as much. If this bezel comes in at one point, what measurement did I get on that? Yeah, maybe, maybe one point, just over 1.5. It's tough to measure it. Supposedly on paper, we're looking at 2.17 on the previous model. And this 1.55 is going to be a record breaker when it ships. It does make an impact. It does feel futurist. But again, is that going to assess the upgrade? Point five less bezel, but it does make an impact and it feels new when you hold it. So here's what I'm starting to think. I'm like inspecting this looking at how thin it is imagining the strength necessary structure and then also recognizing that apple has chosen titanium obviously in the apple watch ultra and i'm thinking for the 15 pro and pro max we could be looking at a titanium iphone if it actually happens and if you did have titanium you would have this brushed look to it and you would obviously have incredible strength properties at a weight savings. And then it brings you to the next part of the discussion, which is, well, why bother calling it Max? If you've already got the watch and you're calling that Ultra and it features titanium and it features an action button, then why not just call this the iPhone 15 or the iPhone 15 Pro Ultra? That's the only problem. What happens to the smaller model? That's the way they've kind of differentiated where you could have Pro and then something more than Pro. But Pro Ultra sounds like too much. So you just, do you just have Pro and then Ultra? Or could you actually have Ultra Max, which is just getting out of control? There's gonna be plenty of people that watch this video and go, it's the same thing. What are you talking about? And yeah, I mean, in most ways it is. Obviously it'll have an upgraded chip, A17. The cameras should have some level of enhancement. You've got the, some new buttons on there. They'll probably talk about increased battery life because it got ever so slightly fatter. And then they'll show you the front of the device and they'll probably talk about Thunderbolt on the Pro models. And then you'll be sitting there thinking, are those things of value to me? Do I need this upgrade? And certainly some people will buy it, but certainly for others, it won't be necessary. And it's becoming increasingly difficult in the smartphone market to compel people to be on that upgrade cycle that they used to be because a lot of the improvements these days are strictly incremental. Anyway, there you have it. Your best look yet at the iPhone 15 Pro Max, in this case, in this matte white finish. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button because we're probably gonna have some more follow-ups before this device officially drops. And so if you don't wanna miss that, then the simplest way is to click the subscribe button. Okay, cool, wow. Interest. What a beautiful sample model. Well done. Now, no matter which version of iPhone 15 you choose to go with, or maybe not even a 15, could be a 14 for that matter, none of them are going to come with any charge brick. So that's where our wonderful partner at Anchor comes in because they have so many solutions and in many cases, cost savings compared to trying to pick up these charge bricks from Apple themselves or even other companies. And then obviously they have a tremendous track record. Are you actually gonna throw things at me? We have a few options here. This one is kind of a one charger to rule them all. It's again, prime capable charger. So this thing's gonna deliver enough power, not only to juice up your new iPhone 15 Ultra Max, probably your laptop, ultrabook, and your tablets. And since the new device is now featuring USB type C and fast charging, this is gonna be one way to take advantage of it and to only carry one cable with you for all of those devices. So one type C cable, one beautiful charge brick like this one. And what is, this is 150 watts, good Lord. This is obviously the premium option of the bunch. You don't need to get this carried away, but if you want one charger to rule them all, this could be a way to get that done. Another option might be something like this, which is 
the 5, also known as the Nano Pro. So this is going to be a slightly more approachable price point. It's not going to deliver as much power, but if you want something extremely portable, which still has more capability than Apple's own charger, this is going to get that done. Plus, they got this lovely lavender color now. So this guy's going to have two Type-C connectors capable of charging at... 40 watts. I mean, that's still plenty of wattage, especially when you consider the scale of it. So this is going to be a popular choice and a more affordable price point. Oh, pro. And this one feels even more portable than the last and likely the most affordable of the bunch. Look at this little guy. This is one of my favorite chargers around here. I have tons of these things at home. Uh, this is you pop it in the pocket. The kids pick these up and use them same beautiful lavender color that's going to be your single type c connector thank god apple's going to the type c connector on the 15 pro just make lives easier okay this is the last one and it was a little heavy so that was a slightly risky throw by the way and this is uh, actually for the wall outlet it's going to have a ton of different options for recharging it's the 727 charge station also gan prime also 100 watts you have two USB Type-C, two USB-A, obviously two AC ports. This is going to be a beautiful thing to live near your desk, as an example. Ooh, lovely. I like the brushed look on that with the matte black finish up above. It's pretty lightweight, actually. So the power connector, a nice little flat style, so the whole thing stays low profile. And then down on the bottom here, two Type-Cs, two Type-As. Oh, my goodness. The number of options from Anchor continues to expand. An incredible partner to have here on the show and an incredible companion for your iPhone 15. Ultra. Excuse me. I would like to make sure you're subscribed to this channel because this is the people videos.